we have uh, Richard Snow. Um, how are you, Richard? I'm uh, very good, thanks. How are you? Excellent. Very good, thank you. Uh, now, Richard is the author of a new book about Henry Ford, uh, I Invented the Modern Age, The Rise of uh, Henry Ford. Uh, so, a very interesting book. I've been uh, reading a, a few experts from, uh, from the book, and uh, he was quite a character, Mr. Henry Ford, huh? Oh, he certainly <laughs> was, and, uh, and a very, uh, a very, a very unusual man in that he could be extremely good and extremely bad. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I was doing some of the of the reviews on your book, and uh, if I understand, like he wouldn't he wouldn't survive today, right? <laughs> in the corporate America. No, <laughs> he certainly would not. Uh, but in in but in his day, he. Uh, he he was he was certainly the richest man in America and uh, one of the most powerful and I think the uh, what, what everybody every his, his name is still famous and of course if you oh, go on doors you can see it on a car on the street any day of the week but um, he uh, began out of uh, nothing and he was very early convinced. Uh, at a time when there were no automobiles, there were really very few automobiles in America, that this was the becoming thing. And he, but what cars there were would cost maybe five, six thousand dollars. This would be about 1905. When a nice home in, uh, in a nice town would cost, oh, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Ford thought that the automobile would change the country and the world if he could get it in the hands of people who could afford it. I mean, if he could get it in the hands of people who didn't have a lot of money. Uh, he thought it's a car that should be owned by every farmer, every shopkeeper, and every working man in, in the country. And he, and he built a car that was easy to fix. It was as ugly and as <laughs> reliable as a cast iron stove. Yeah. And he sold it cheap. And it made a tremendous impact. And in the end, he, uh, in the end, he built 15 million of them. And it changed the way Americans lived within a decade. But in order to do that, he had to figure out a way how to build it very fast. Yeah. And when he when he started his factory, uh, twenty say if a carburetor required a person to do 21 things on it to put it together. Yeah. He then broke that down. He had 21 men doing one thing each as it went by them. Uh, one would add a bolt, one would add a valve. It would go by them on a moving assembly line. Yeah. And that went, that was basically the beginning of mass production. And he was able, in the end, when he had his whole plant working that way, he went from turning out 340 cars a day to one car every 10 seconds. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing, like, the people uh, still believe, uh, some people still believe that Henry Ford invented the car, but that's not the case. His great contribution to the car industry is what just uh, you described, uh, making it fast, making it cheap, and making it available for a lot of people, right? Yes, and that, yes, exactly, and that, and that mass production spread to every industry, and that had the most tremendous effect on, on the country, on the national wealth, and in 1914, he did a very radical thing that surprised everybody, but he doubled his workers' wages. But uh, from he established the five-dollar day, which doesn't sound like a lot now, but that yeah. was twice what the uh, manufacturing wage was. Yeah. And that allowed, at one step, that allowed the people who built his cars to buy it. To, Exactly. Yeah. Nobody who put to, nobody who put together one of those big expensive cars could ever in his life save up enough money to get it. But anybody who who worked on the Ford production line could own a Ford, and so his his workers became his customers. And this, you know, this really uh, began a consumer cycle that's still going on in our country, and it built the middle class as we know it today. Yeah. Probably uh, Ford employees can buy cars today, but uh, back then doubling the salary would be another reason for why he wouldn't survive in corporate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, you don't see that happening a lot these days. Yeah. So another thing uh, that, that uh, a lot of people don't know about Mr. Henry Ford is that uh, he failed at the beginning, and he wasn't uh, very successful until he was, uh, well, not late in his, uh, in his career, but he, when he was 40, I mean... No, he started... that's absolutely true, and it was sort of late in his life. It, he was... Uh... 
he was in his 40s before he got going, which is um, which is is pretty well along uh, in years when you're when you're gambling on something absolutely new. Yes, he uh, he he founded, he got backing for two companies, and walked away from both of them because he wasn't ready. He hadn't yet figured out how to do what he wanted to do and when and when he found out he couldn't he just uh he sort of disappeared uh but the the third time he got it right he established the ford motor company in uh, 1904 and it's still going today but he said a very interesting thing years later he said um of course there was no in the beginning there was no demand for the automobile yeah. there never is for a new product and you think of it sort of the other way around that that, that that necessity brings in the new product but not at all i mean and it's true nobody uh nobody uh nobody knew they needed an iphone until they had one exactly i believe one of the famous quotes from uh, mr ford is that uh, if he had asked people they would uh they would want a faster horse right <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, what, what, what do I want with this? It makes a lot of noise. I don't get it. How does it run? It looks dangerous. You know, all the things that did resist. But once, once he got it out there, uh, there was a fantastic demand for them. Until uh, you know, in a survey taken, um, taken about. 15 years after he started going, a significant number of housewives said they would rather, they would give up, they would give up their food and shoes for their children before they gave up their car. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and so it was a, it's, it's, probably, a hit. it's probably true today, too. <laughs> I, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I, so, I, I certainly would have when I was 17. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're talking to Richard Snow, the author of a, a new book about Henry Ford, I Invented the Modern Age. And uh, what inspired you to write this book? You know, he, um, at the end of his life, he, he got, he built a wonderful museum out right outside of Detroit in Dearborn, Michigan. Yeah. And it was a museum about American history. And he was able to collect on such a such a big scale, but he'd always admired the inventor Thomas Edison, who gave us the electric light bulb. Edison had a factory in New Jersey where he invented it. Ford brought the factory from New Jersey to Detroit, along with seven freight car loads of New Jersey dirt, so it could stand on its own <laughs> soil. Yeah. And he eventually had 110 buildings uh, where the Wright brothers built their airplane. All of that was there. And I went and visited it, and it got under my skin. I was absolutely fascinated. I thought, who, what kind of a man would put this amazing town together and that's what got me going yeah uh, yeah it's a fascinating place i have the luck to be there a few times and actually i'm going there next month again and, oh, that's uh, great it's, it's really it's really terrific isn't it yeah absolutely and uh, as, as you were mentioning it's not only about cars it's about american history the wright brothers and in the museum he has not only ford cars he has everything he has locomotive he has cars from other manufacturers so it's right, a very airplanes, interesting report. everything it's, 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 and, and all beautifully displayed and uh he, you know he has a wonderful yeah a wonderful eye for detail and they in, in that big museum there's a uh a cabin from one of the earliest motels in the 1920s and you can look in the window into the tiny little room there's a comb sitting on a, on a dresser and there are little ants going across the comb <laughs> that's, the kind, that's yeah. the kind of care he took with the tail exactly so richard tell me without giving up much about uh, the book but can you share some of the let's say worst things that you found out about uh, mr ford uh, that are in your book some of the bad things yeah yeah oh well yes he i mean there are a lot of them he got very very i it's mysterious but i think you know once he had this car he didn't want to change it he had it in production for 20 years and that was too long it had been a big pioneer it did what it did but by by that time people wanted you know a more comfortable car and Ford wouldn't change. He loved his car. He saw it as a, you know, he saw it as a moral object even. And when people tried to make him change it, he got angrier and angrier and he lashed out at everything, including his son, whose life he pretty much destroyed because his son wanted to, uh, to, to, to build a second generation of Ford. Yeah. But the thing that he still remembered for and that's most ruined his reputation was that he suddenly decided that Jews were responsible for all the trouble in the world and he bought up a newspaper in Detroit 
called the Dearborn Independent. Uh -huh. And then he started for for, for a ninety pay a, a ninety ninety a serial of ninety issues of it in called the International Jew Mankind's Greatest Problem. And he carried on this this very ugly anti Semitic campaign for months and months and months. And his dealers were begging him to stop. Everyone was begging him to stop. But uh he was you know, that same stubbornness that allowed him to to develop this wonderful industrial enterprise also uh it made him cling to an ugly and stupid idea long after he should have dropped it. Yeah, pretty fascinating book. Um, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to complete to, to finish reading it. Thank uh, you. And so again, Richard Snow, the author of a new book on uh, about Henry Ford, I invented the modern age. And uh, so the book is available everywhere, right? Amazon.com. Oh yes, yes. And uh, where can audience can find out more about you and uh, your your books and everything else? Oh, I, 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 uh, they can look me up on Amazon. I'm there. I also have a website under Richard Dash Snow. But, uh, it's pretty primitive, but I'm working on it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Richard. I really thank enjoyed you. It's uh, very good to talk with talking you. Talking to you. And uh, again, uh, congratulations on the book. Uh, and I highly recommend it to everybody who is listening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take care now. Ahí tienen a Richard Snow, el autor de un nuevo libro sobre la vida de Henry Ford. I invented the modern age, yo inventé la era moderna y entonces habla sobre cómo Henry Ford, el, el, el fundador de la Ford Motor Company, tenía sus cosas buenas y tenía sus cosas uh, eh, malas. Uh, y bueno, así fue como se ha fundado una de las empresas más importantes, no solo de la industria de Estados Unidos, sino de todo el mundo. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y cuando regresemos vamos a hablar sobre el intento para romper un nuevo récord Guinness a bordo de de un Volkswagen Passat con tecnología TDI Cliser.